I want to take you uh, back to that breaking story when following out of downtown Houston this morning. A man has been holed up inside a crane going on three hours now as we push in uh, on that. This is happening near Crawford and Walker Streets. KPRC 2's Brittany Jeffers will have a report coming up in about 15 minutes from now. The video this morning out of Noonan, Georgia. That's where tornado uh, damage is reported uh, in a historic downtown area of this place. Uh, repair crews are on the scene right now. These are some of the images we're getting. National Weather Service had warned that this tornado was uh, particularly dangerous. So far, no reports of any deaths or injuries there. At least five people have died after tornadoes swept through Alabama. That wave of tornadoes that rolled across five southern states, leaving a trail of damage. The twisters ripped homes off their foundations, toppled trees, and knocked out power to thousands. This morning, people are checking on loved ones as they try to pick up what's left of their homes. We heard it, and I said, oh, my God, oh, my God, it's gone. I can tell because you could smell it. You could smell the pine. You see the bed frame? Yeah. I was out there watching the, the president on TV. Experts say the threat of severe weather in the south is not over yet. Now, here's another look at uh, some of the damage that uh, came in from Jacksonville, which is the eastern part of Alabama. Uh, so the storm top toppled several large trees there. Uh, lots of debris, but again, no injuries reported. A gym owner in Pelham, Alabama, shared these photos of his damaged business. Alex McNair says a tornado ripped off the roof and bricks went through windows and doors yesterday afternoon. Luckily, no one there was hurt. Britt, I know you're following all of this. The pictures we're seeing this morning are, are just devastating. Oh, my goodness, yes. And um, current conditions in some of those areas actually improving in North Alabama and southern portions of Tennessee. But we still have thunderstorms out there in central and southern portions of Alabama and also in Georgia. Now, the storm reports coming in from the last 24 hours, very impressive. As we put them up on radar, you can see where they were really concentrated in central portions of Alabama and then pushing into Georgia itself. Itself. These are just the tornado reports. If you add on hail and wind damage, it is incredible what unfolded yesterday. And we're still tracking those strong storms in Georgia this morning. Uh, meanwhile, here in Houston, a different story. It's very quiet. We have clear skies. It's going to be a nice Friday. Temperatures right now are in the 50s, so it's a very cool and comfortable start to the day. Maybe a light sweater. That's all you really need. And you only need it for a couple hours. I mean, look at this warm up. It's pretty quick. Upper 60s by 10 a.m., 70s by 11 a.m. And this afternoon, we're topping off at 82 degrees. So temperatures running a little bit above average for the end of March. Looking out towards the west, you can see the snow showers in the Rockies, some rain showers moving into Kansas. We do have a weather system that's going to be pulling through for late Saturday night through Sunday morning. So ahead of that, we're going to work in a little more moisture tomorrow. So tomorrow morning, some patchy fog and light drizzle possible as a warm front's moving up to the north of us. But the best chance of rain is going to be Saturday night through Sunday morning with the actual cold front. So there's going to be parts of your Saturday where it's going to be but you know, pretty nice to get out. You're going to notice more cloud cover and feel more humidity, but it's going to be mainly dry. Then we'll work in the shower Saturday night through Sunday morning. After about 10 a.m. on Sunday, we're good to go. And the rest of your Sunday afternoon will feature more sunshine and cooler temperatures behind that front. We're back to the 70s as we close out your weekend. Looking towards next week, we have one cold front in the forecast. So we start things off nice and quiet with sunshine. Cold front's going to arrive next Wednesday. That's your chance of rain. And behind that cold front, we have some cooler air that's going to be moving in. Still very pleasant, but it's going to feel more seasonable with temperatures in the low to mid 70s as we head into Easter weekend, which is on the end of our 10 day forecast today. 82 degrees. It's going to be warm out there. Humidity still in check, but you're going to feel it more over the weekend. We do have that chance of rain mainly Saturday night into Sunday morning, and then next week we start things off nice and sunny. A great start to your work week. And then as we head closer to Easter weekend, notice those temperatures cooling down low 70s right now anticipated for Good Friday into Easter Sunday. Eric. All right, Britta, thank you very much. Not a bad 10-day forecast. I like it. I also like what's going on traffic-wise. Traffic flow is looking good. We are in the green. No crashes to speak of here at 549 in the morning on a Friday. Happy Friday, by the way. Katy Freeway looking great. Traffic volume picking up a little bit, but still moving along at posted speeds. North Freeway at Oak Ridge, same story. Coming in from Montgomery County, you're looking at a 25-minute drive. Certainly could be worse. Uh, all right, overall drive times looking good from every direction. Gulf Freeway 
19 minutes east side or 17 minutes in on I-10 from Baytown. If you're coming in from LaFort on 225, you're looking at a 12 minute drive. North side of town back to Montgomery County. Want to remind you of a little bit of housekeeping. This is the total closure begins midnight tonight, 1488 FM 1488. The exit ramp or the entrance ramp, I should say, getting on to 45 northbound is going to be closed for an entire month. So you'll need to find an alternate route. Owen. All right, uh, Eric, appreciate it. Uh, we'll take you back to our breaking news. Yes, uh, we're following this out of downtown Houston. SWAT, uh, HPD SWAT, now climbing this crane that we've been looking at for several hours here. A guy basically climbed up there. He's been holding out inside the crane for nearly three hours, and now SWAT's climbing up there to try to get him down. This is uh, all happening near Crawford and Walker Streets. KPRC 2's Brittany Jeffers will give us another update on the situation as it unfolds. Um, another live report ahead in our 6 a.m. hour. Well, you know, spring is here, and for many folks, that means getting outside and getting more active. And there's one fitness tracker that's generating a lot of buzz these days. Liz McLaughlin shows us what WHOOP is all about. In a crowded and competitive fitness wearables market, the WHOOP band has an enthusiastic following. We pulled some of the most interesting insights from professional athletes. Garnering buzz through its weekly podcast and notable user base, including NFL star Patrick Mahomes, pro golfer Justin Thomas, and Olympian Kate Courtney. WHOOP is a wearable technology that's designed to change behavior and improve health. It's everything from hardware, so you can see this small sensor on my wrist, to software and analytics. An accelerometer tracks heart rate and other metrics. But unlike bands from Fitbit, Apple, Amazon, and others, Whoop doesn't count steps, instead logging sleep, recovery, and strain. Strain is a measurement of cardiovascular load, so we're looking at elevated heart rate for periods of time and calculating strain as a result. Users get the tracker for free with a monthly subscription of $18 to $30. A bigger long-term cost than competitors, but one that Whoop user and data scientist Jessica Dunn says has been worth it. It is an eye-opening experience. Over the past year, she's used analysis reports and daily coaching in the app to make behavioral changes, improve her sleep, and adjust her workouts. I wake up and this this recovery is, is calculated for me. You know what days you should be pulling back and what days you should be pushing a little bit more. Pros to everyday consumers, making small changes to optimize performance. Liz McLaughlin, NBC News. Trending just before six, a handwritten job application from 1973 filled out by a young Steve Jobs. This thing has sold for more than $222,000. On that application, the man who would be the co-founder of Apple highlights his experience with computers and calculators. A year later, he joined Atari where he met Steve Wozniak. They founded Apple three years later in 1976 and the rest they say is history. <laughs> Says driver's license, yes. Access to transportation, possible but not probable. <laughs> All right, here's a pricier bid that was recently made a hand painted self portrait by the famous humanoid robot Sophia has sold for almost $700,000. It was sold as uh, an NFT, a non fungible token. Uh, which is unique, authentic, and verified. It's, it's, it, it goes along with the cryptocurrency you've heard about, potentially, okay. like similar to like a Bitcoin. All right. uh, we, we use that term a lot in that cryptocurrency world. An artist helped produce this brightly colored portrait of Sophia. It was processed in the robot's neural networks, and then Sophia painted an interpretation of the image. The auction winner has ownership of the 12 second clip showing the portrait morphing into Sophia's interpretation. I see a little silhouette of a man. Scaramouche, Scaramouche, will you do the bandango? Yes, a new honor for, and everyone sing. Galileo. A new honor for Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody. The 1975 rock classic has been certified diamond by the Recording Industry Association of America. The rare milestone marks 10 million or more in sales and stream equivalents in the U.S. for that song. Queen is the first British band ever to earn the Diamond Song Award. All right, just in time for Easter, Pepsi and Peeps have a, a, a new uh, flavor. The companies have the new mixes that, of the taste of Pepsi with Peeps and you can't buy it, they're just gonna give it away through a contest. So you have to post 
go figure, post to your friends about your favorite springtime activities with the hashtag hanging with my peeps and you got to tag Pepsi and then you get a chance at trying these things out and you have until the end of the month to do it. All right, we're getting a better picture of a fruit cake that is said to be a hundred years old found in Ant Antarctica. It comes with the peeps, strangely enough. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, it's now been brought to life in 3D thanks to new technology. The cake, which is 110 years old, went viral when it was found perfectly preserved in 2017. A team led by a Norwegian explorer found the cake in one of Antarctica's oldest buildings. Now with a new app, people can see the cake and other items found up close and learn about early expeditions. I hear it tastes as good as it looks. Mm -hmm. Coming up at 6, we're heading back back out to downtown Houston where SWAT is now working to get a man who's been in a crane. He climbed up there. He's been holding out for hours. We'll have the latest. Starting March 29th, the Start TV Network. Go ahead, fascinate me. Featuring compelling contemporary dramas. If you'll excuse me, I have murders to solve. Coming to broadcast channel 2.2 and these providers starting Monday, March 29th. It's Landmark Furniture's 24th anniversary sale. We're overstocked due to the winter storm, so all our premium furniture has been marked with clearance pricing. Save big when you let us build your custom whole home package. Plus free same-day delivery and no credit check. LandmarkFurniture.com. It's not enough to be the leader in robotic-assisted procedures if we're not by your side for every step of your recovery. Guiding you back to what makes you, you. Because it's not enough to replace your need if we're not getting you to the moments that can't be replaced. Memorial Hermann. Advancing health, personalizing care. Love lower than low prices? Then get more ways to save at Kroger, where you can find personalized coupons, weekly deals, and rewards like fuel points. All for prices that are lower than low. On food that's fresher than fresh. Kroger, fresh for everyone. When it comes to shaping futures, no one does it like Lone Star College. From offering over 93,000 students a quality, affordable education with hundreds of degrees and certification programs at seven campuses throughout the greater Houston area to creating a Texas-sized economic impact of nearly $3 billion. We're launching futures and creating opportunities one student, one family, one community at a time. Find out more at LoneStar.edu. Lone Star College. Start close. Go far. It's our 24th anniversary sale at Mattresses for Less. Queen size mattresses starting at $199. King size mattresses starting at $299. All with free same day delivery and no credit check. Shop in store or online. Mattressesforless.com. It's where leaders come together to talk about important issues. Issues that affect your family, your job, your community, and more. Join us Sunday mornings at 1030 right here on KPRC2. For any episodes you've missed, visit click2houston.com. Back here at the 558, getting alcohol to go may soon become the norm in Texas. Yeah, the Texas House passed legislation that would allow restaurants to sell alcohol to go beyond the coronavirus pandemic. House Bill 1024 would permanently allow beer, wine, and mixed drinks to be included in pickup and delivery orders. The proposal passed yesterday with a vote of 144 to 1. A Senate committee still needs to approve its version of the bill before the full chamber can take up that matter. Well, it'll now be easier for people without a lot of cash on hand to get out of jail in California. In a unanimous ruling, the state Supreme Court says basing bail solely on finances is unconstitutional. Judges can still detain people if they think they deserve it. The decision gives victims a voice so they feel safe if a defendant is released. The ruling does leave some questions such as who can be detained. This is KPRC 2 News Today. Breaking news this morning on that standoff in downtown Houston. A man up in a crane, 15 stories tall. This morning, what police are trying to do to get him down safely. Also breaking, tornadoes sweep through Alabama and the south with deadly results. Some of them were caught on camera, like this one here. Ahead, more on the damage left behind.
KPRC2 weather, live look at our temperature map this morning, uh, mostly in the 50s around town. We're just going to show us what to expect with regard to rain this weekend. It's just about 6 o'clock right now. I'm Owen Complenty. I'm Lisa Hernandez. Eric Brates in for Anna Vita with What's Driving Houston. But first, let's get a check of this forecast with meteorologist Britta Merwin on our Friday. Yeah, Friday's the key word, right? And weather is on our side. It feels very comfortable outside. It's cool and crisp, but good morning. Take a morning walk. Uh, there's a live look at the Southwest Freeway from our tower camp. We do have clear skies, so you do need to grab your sunglasses, especially if you're an eastbound commuter. After that sunrise, that sun glare is going to be out there. 54 degrees currently here in town. We are in the 40s in Tomball, Conroe, and Cleveland. It's a little bit of a chilly start north of town. Galveston, you're in the low 60s. Right now in Brazoria County, you're in the upper 50s in Pearland. Now, it's going to be a really quick warm-up today because we have dry air in place. It's easy to heat up, so a big swing. Uh, we're going to be in the 70s by about 1030 in the morning. Late this afternoon, low 80s, and if you have evening plans, Looking good. A lot of sunshine. A few clouds will push in as we get into the evening forecast. We do have rain on the way for this weekend. Eric, it's not a washout, but we have a few rain chances, especially for Saturday night. I'm going to give you all the details coming up at 615 so you can plan around those raindrops. All right, looking forward to that, Britta. Thank you very much. Traffic-wise, crash-free, that continues around town. We like to see that. Uh, we were talking about a crane incident downtown. Just want to remind you, Metro Rail Green Line runs right past where this incident is happening. Crawford and Russell. So it is interrupted that service. They're running a shuttle bus between uh, Edo, uh, the soccer stadium and the theater district uh, to get by in the meantime. But just know that there are delays on the green line if that is part of your morning drive. All right, 610 West Loop looking good at Westheimer. Uh, as far as your drive times go, here they are. We are in the green delay free across the board. We will hope that that continues for the duration of the Friday morning commute. Back to you. That would be nice. All right, Eric, thank you. 601 to our breaking news this morning from downtown Houston. There's a standoff going on between police and a guy on a crane. Yeah, that guy broke into that crane more than two hours ago. ago. KPRCT's Brittany Jeffers live near Discovery Green. What's, what's going on down there, Brittany? Very active out here within the past 15 minutes. SWAT arrived. They have been climbing up the ladder here just underneath the cab, that white box nestled in between uh, in the middle up there uh, to try to make contact with the man. Now, as we were zooming in with our cameras, we could see that the person inside had his hands up against the glass of the window there. But right now, HPD, HFD, SWAT teams are trying to come up with a plan to get this man safely down, and they've been trying to monitor monitor him over the past two and a half hours uh, from the ground as well as from the sky. Uh, HFD's got a drone. They were able to fly it up there and uh, uh, we we're able to uh, see that he's still in there. Uh, once we put the light on him, he was moving around a little bit in there. Now, police say around 3 o'clock they were called out to some suspicious activity around Crawford and Rusk. They say when they arrived, they saw the man jump a fence, and then he started to climb up the crane. HFD used a drone then, as they just mentioned, to, to monitor him. But at this point, their main focus is to try to communicate with him. As I mentioned, uh, SWAT team members have made their way up there towards the cab of the crane. Now, when we asked officers earlier well, what it appeared that he was doing up there, they said not a lot um, that he was just sitting down uh, but we did see him put his hands up against the glass probably about five minutes ago of course at this point the main focus for them trying to communicate with him and to get him down safely of course we will keep you updated when we learn more and Brittany Jeffers KPRC 2 News okay Brittany thank you so much do